Hello, good day. So, to continue, the next topic for hydraulics would be the stability of floating bodies. So, naman itong stability of floating bodies, ano ba yung concern natin dito? So, from the word itself, stability, no, magiging concern tayo kung gaano ka-stable no, yung object natin when it is being submerged into a fluid. Kasi take note, no, pag sinabi natin yung body natin is nakasubmerge sa tubig, pwede mag-tilt to or pwede matumba tayo no, because of the fluid or because of the water. So, pag pag-uusapan natin kung gaano, paano ba magiging stable yung ating bodies or yung objects ninyo. Okay? So, as stated, during your buoyancy topic, no, it is just the same consideration if any floating body is subjected into two opposing vertical forces. And what are what are those two forces? No, that is your weight and that is your buoyant force. So body weight that is just the downward and always acting on the center of gravity. So dito sa stability of floating bodies, tatawagin natin yan as your G. So, your weight is acting on your center of gravity. So, what is your buoyant force? No, Buoyant force is which it is an upward force and always acting on the center of buoyancy. So, ano ba yung ibig sabihin ko dito? Okay, your weight and buoyant force are always equal and if these forces are collinear, the body will be in upright position as shown below. Okay, so sab para sa pinag-usapan natin during your buoyancy, no? Sabi natin that the uh, weight, no? Weight is equals to the buoyant force. This is your weight and this is your buoyant force. So sabi dito, no? If the buoyant force and weight are acting collinear, therefore the body is in upright position. So for example, this is your liquid surface and this is your body. Your body is partially submerged. And this is your base. At yung draft, yung height ng draft is tatawagin natin as variable D. This is your center of gravity. So take note, ha? Take note. No, center of gravity is different from your centroid. Kasi yung centroid kasi ninyo, uh, mostly it acts on the part kung saan yung mas mabigat. So ito, no, center of gravity yung pag-uusapan natin dito. So para mas ma-imagine nyo pala, anong itong pinag-uusapan natin dito sa stability of floating bodies, isipin nyo na lang is ship or barko. No? Kasi doon naman mas magandang i-represent itong topic na to, yung mga barko natin. Kung paano magiging stable. Kasi ba yung mga barko natin is naka-float naman siya sa ating fluids. Okay? Pa, uh, pahapya ako lang yun. So, as definition, your weight or your body's weight is acting downward on your center of gravity. Pero din to, nakikita ninyo. Okay? And you have here your buoyant force. Your buoyant force, okay, I mean, your BO rather, okay? Your BO is the center of displacement or your center of buoyancy. Ibig sabihin, ito yung parang magiging center of gravity ninyo sa part, no? That, sa part ng object ninyo that is being uh, submerged. Itong center of gravity, your center of gravity, ang concern niya is the whole part of the object. Okay? Lahat ng part na ito. But when we say buoyant, uh, I mean center of buoyancy or Oh uh, yeah, center of buoyancy. Ang concern lang ng center of buoyancy natin is yung part lang ng object natin na naka-submerge or yung part ng object natin that is being displaced. Okay, sana naintindihan yan. Okay, so yung buoyant force naman ninyo is makikita natin sa center of buoyancy. Ninyo, parang parehas lang sa G. Yung W ninyo is makikita ninyo sa G while your buoyant force ninyo is makikita ninyo sa center of buoyancy. Okay. Ano ito? Okay. So, how will we know if our body or if, uh, if our floating body is stable or not? Sabi dito, a floating body is stable when it is displaced and it returns to equilibrium. Ibig sabihin lang nito is that if your body daw 
no for example yung ship na lang natin yung mga barko if yung mga barko daw natin is lumubog no is or it's being displaced but it's the the center of gravity and the buoyant center of buoyancy is placed pa rin therefore it is still equilibrium okay no kapag nagtitilt tilt yung ating uh, barko yung ship natin no tilt tilt siya but then it's returning into its equilibrium no to its upright position therefore that is stable but when a floating body is unstable when it is displaced it will not return to equilibrium pag sinabi natin it will not return to equilibrium ibig sabihin nagro-rotate na yung ship ninyo kasi hindi na siya makaka-stand ulit eh no nagro-rotate na siya nahugno na siya bakit sabi saya pa nahugno na siya ibig sabihin kapag ganun no it is not stable so we have three types here to analyze if your body is stable or not okay so you have here yung para sa pinag-usapan natin kanina and you have here m okay your m coincides with g so ito yung m natin ngayon dito m your m is called as your metacentric okay itong m na ito or yung metacentric ninyo will tell us if your ship or if your floating body is still stable or not Okay, but when your metacentric coincides with the center of gravity, tinatawag natin yung upright or neutral equilibrium. Okay, so what if your M, no, what if your M is above G? Okay, your M is above G. So if your M is above G, okay, mamaya ay explain ko to, if your M is above G, Therefore, that is stable equilibrium. Ano yung nangyari dito? Balikan ko lang ng konti. Okay? When your floating body, no, meron, if meron tayong floating body, alam naman natin na hindi always upright position or neutral equilibrium yung ating mga barko. No? Kasi nagtitilt talaga yan because ano ba yung mga nagkakos ng tilt ng barko natin or ng body natin? Yung wave. No? Yung wave, pwede yung magbigyan ng rason ba kung bakit nagtitilt yung ating ship. Ano pa ba? Hangin. Yung hangin can also give reasons kung bakit nagtitilt yung ating barko. So, for the instance, itong body natin is nagtilt siya. Okay? Kapag nagtilt yan, no, it is the same. Uh, we will try to consider the same center of gravity. Your weight is still acting on your center of gravity. You have here your buoyant force. But then again, naka-incline na tayo. No? Dito, mag-proproject tayo ng bagong center of buoyancy. Kasi nag-tilt na tayo eh. Ibig sabihin, yung volume draft natin, nag-volume draft natin is nagbago. No? E di ba ito kanina nakadraft yan, nakalubog yan? Yung nag-tilt na tayo, this part is no longer submerged, no? exposed na to sa air. So, having that said, ibig sabihin, no, magkakaroon tayo ng bagong center of buoyancy. Kasi may tilting eh. Okay? Nung nag-tilt tayo at a specific distance, no, magkakaroon tayo ng center of buoyancy. Tatatawag natin tong B not prime. No? B not prime kasi yung tawagin. Pero parang ito yung mahirapan, B O prime na lang. Okay? So, from the center, of, from the new placement of your center of buoyancy and pag i-proproject natin siya sa center of gravity ninyo, mag-i-intersect to sa gitna at makikita natin yung metacentric ninyo. Okay? And that is your metacentric height. So, from your center of gravity, from your new placement of your center of buoyancy, tatawagin natin yung x. Ibig sabihin, yung x na yan, that is the distance kung gaano kalayo yung pag-tilt or yung, yung bagong placement ng inyong center of buoyancy. Okay? And anong moment ba yung ibibigay nito if your M or your metacentric is above your center of gravity that is your writing moment no writing moment or resisting moment so during the dumps no gravity dumps nakilala niyo na sino yung writing moment or resisting moment no we know that your writing moment siya yung magre-resist to overturn the body 
Okay? So, ibig sabihin pala, if your metacentric is above your center of gravity, hindi magkakaroon ng rotation, no? hindi magkakaroon ng rotation sa body natin or sa floating body ninyo. Kasi i re ng writing moment na mag-overturn yung ating floating body. So, yun lang yung tatandaan nyo, yung height ng inyong metacentric or the placement of your metacentric. Okay, so if M is above G, that is stable. No, ibig sabihin, ox pa, goods pa yung ating ship. But, ito na, but when M is below your center of gravity, ganito yung magiging isura niyan, no, nag-tilt na siya, so when there is tilting, therefore, the placement of your center of buoyancy is magbabago pa rin, the same idea, no, So, kapag in-apply natin yan, kapag in-extend natin yan, mag intersect yung inyong center of gravity at yung inyong, the placement of your buoyant, uh, the, the, the placement of your center of, uh, the placement of the new center of buoyancy ninyo at na ng gravity, kapag i-proproject natin yan, your M or your metacentric height is below your G. And when your metacentric height is below G, magkakaroon tayo ng overturning moment. At ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng overturning moment? ba diba? Ibig sabihin, it gives rotation or mag-overturn yung ating body. Ibig sabihin, wala na. Magsisink na yung, there is a uh, possibility na pwede nang magsink yung floating body ninyo. So, when M is below your center of gravity, therefore, that is unstable equilibrium. Okay? Sana naintindihan yan. So, let us have this one. You have MBO. Okay? So, MBO, you have a formula of your MBO there. You have B squared over 12D times the quantity of 1 plus 0.5 plus 0.5 tangent squared of theta. And this formula for your MBO, that is, uh, that is, for rectangular sections. Ibig sabihin ng MBO, that is the distance of your center of buoyancy papunta sa metacentric. Okay? Center of buoyancy papunta sa metacentric. Ito yun, oh, para makita ninyo. Ito yun. Saan na ba yun? Bo center of buoyancy to metacentric, that is your MBO. Okay? So, ito na yung writing moment na pag-usapan natin kanina and your overturning moment. Pag-usapan natin yung iba't ibang formula dito. Okay? Okay, so you have the formula for your writing moment or your overturning moment. So, basically, that is just weight times x or that is just the moment arm. no So, to derive that one, no? pwede nyo na itong gamitin kasi na-derive naman na. So, that is weight is equal, uh, multiplied by your No, tatawagin natin tong mg that is your metacentric height. Metacentric height sine of theta. Okay, kasi ito may yung magiging angle natin, no? Kasi ganito yung nangyari oh sa ship ninyo. When this is your liquid surface, this is your liquid <laughs> This is your liquid surface tapos nagtilt to Ibig sabihin, yung consideration natin kanina, magkakaroon tayo ng angle. If this is angle, this is also an angle. You know, meron tayong sign dito. No? You know, opposite times opposite over hypotenuse. Okay. Ay, yung ibang formulas pa pala. So, to get the height of your metacentric, so tatawagin natin yung metacentric ninyo as mg. So, that would be the difference or the sum between your MBO and GBO. Ano ba yung MBO? Yung MBO ninyo is the distance of your metacentric from your uh, center of buoyancy and your GBO is the distance of your center of gravity to your center of buoyancy. Okay? So, meron ditong derived na formula. So, we'll no longer derive this formula, no? Kasi sobrang taas na kapag i-derive pa natin. So, you can get your MBO for uh, other sections. You have exact, that is Vs over V sin of theta. And MBO is equals to I over V. Okay? And take note, that is inertia 
over the volume. And take note, the volume that we are talking here is the volume. No, baka malito kayo. That is just the volume. Hindi ko makita yung L. That is just the volume displaced. Okay, tandaan nyo yan. Okay, ano yun? Tanina. Okay, so dito, yung mga different uh, variables with its definition. So, basahin nyo na lang ito, no? Kasi na-explain ko naman na rin kung ano itong mga variables nito. So, met then, no, sa barko natin, meron tayong kinoconsider dito at uh, when it comes to stability of floating bodies, kung barko yung pag-uusapan natin, ano po yung different tilting ng ating body? Kasi meron tayong dalawang part, no? No, meron tayong in this axis and this axis. So paano ba kung pa ganito yung rotate or yung pagtilt ng ating body, no? Kasi meron tayong sa problema mamaya, magiging specific 'yan. If yung body ninyo at this type of axis is magro-rotate, no? Tatawagin natin yang rolling. And if this axis naman yung magti-tilt Okay, kung yung axis naman yung magtitilt in this motion, tatawagin natin yung pitching. Okay, sige. So, let us have this example number one. Okay. So, example number one, if the center of gravity is at upright position above the center of gravity of a portion underwater, the displacement is 1,000 metric tons and the ship is tipped or tilted by 30 degrees causing the buoyancy or the center of buoyancy to shift sideways by 8 meters. First is to find the location of your metacenter from the bottom of the ship if its draft is 3 meters and your metacentric height. Thank you for a while. Okay, so when we say that our ship it is upright position, that is neutral equilibrium. Ito, yung nakikita ninyo at the first figure. So, you have your center of gravity, you have your center of uh, buoyancy, and the distance daw between your G and your BO, it's stated here that that is 10, wait, no, no, next, that is 10 meters. Okay? So, that is 10 meters. So, basically, GBO or your distance of your center of gravity and your center of buoyancy is equivalent to 10 meters. Okay? Next question is that, a uh, next statement is that uh, you have a volume daw for your displacement and that is 1,000 metric tons and your ship is being tipped or nag-tilt yung ship ninyo into 30 degrees causing the center of buoyancy shift sideways by 8 meters. So, ito muna tayo. Dito muna kayo tingin sa upright position, no? Para hindi kayo malito dito sa tilted. So, sabi niya, no, nagkaroon daw tayo ng tilting, no, sa ating ship na nagkaroon tayo ng 30 degrees. Kasi kung nag-tilt to, 30 degrees man to dito, dyan naman talaga yung uh, baseline talaga natin sa ano, sa theta. But then again, alternating angles. So, since 30 din to. Okay? So, that tilt daw, that tilting daw caused the uh, center of buoyancy or the new placement of uh, center of buoyancy into this distance. Ito na yung BO prime ninyo. Okay? At yung distance daw ng bagong placement ng center of buoyancy ninyo, that is 8 meters. Okay? That is why kapag tinilt natin to, itong upright position na ito, ganito yung itsura. Okay? Sana na gets yan. And take note that the center of buoyancy ninyo, you know, the distance of that is D over 2 and D over 2. The total height of your draft, di ba tinatawag natin yung D? Since your BO is the center of buoyancy, therefore makikita natin to 
no? The placement of your buoyancy is D over 2 and D over 2. Sen parang centroid man to ng graph natin na body. Okay? So, when the tilting happen, no, ito na yung BO prime natin. Kung nandiyan yung BO prime ninyo, therefore, dyan na natin makikita yung buoyant force natin. At nandito yung ating metacentric. Ang hinahanap natin ngayon, find the location of your metacenter from the bottom of the ship if it drops 3 meter. Kapag lumubog daw yung ating ship into 3 meters, hahanapin natin yung location ng metacenter ninyo galing sa baba ng ship. At ang hinahanap natin ngayon would be this variable y. Okay? So, kung i-isolate natin to, right triangle man to, no? that is right triangle, kung i-isolate natin to dito, okay? So, hindi ko siya i-tilt ha para mas maintindihan nyo ano yung nangyari. No? This is your G, this is your B, a center of buoyancy. Ito yung draft ninyo. The placement of your center of buoyancy is nasa gitna. So, that is just D over 2 and D over 2. Okay? Nag-tilt daw tayo. No, because of that, nag-tilt tayo ng 30. Okay? Ng 30 degrees. Ayusin natin yung drawing. Parang, parang right triangle talaga. No. Nagtilt man tayo, no? Paano ba 'to ipapakita na parang right triangle siya na hindi naka-tilt? Oh, ganito na lang, no? So since nagtilt man tayo, this is your center of gravity and this is your BO. Okay? So from that, you have 8 meters. Pag 8 meters natin, ito na yung bagong BO prime ninyo. Mas intindihan niyo ba? O mas nalito kayo? I think mas nalito kayo. No? It tilt na lang talaga natin. Sige, ulitin ko na lang yung drawing. Okay. Yan. So, since nag-tilt man to, yung original natin na center or ng placement ng inyong uh, center of uh, gravity at ng yung buoyancy, nakatilt din yan. Okay. And by that, no, because of the 30, ito, 30 degrees, nagkaroon tayo ng distance na x is equals to 8. So, ito, right triangle yan. Okay? So, this is M. Okay? So, ito, ito, ito na lang. Tingnan na natin ito. Parang mas maganda pa itong figure na ito, no? So, ito yan. Oh, ito yung triangle na pinag-uusapan natin. Yan. Okay? This is right triangle. And the distance between your uh, initial uh, center of buoyancy to your new buoyancy is 8 meters. Okay. Di ba, yung tawag natin sa distance from your center of buoyancy to your metacentric, tinatawag natin yung MBO. Okay? At ang distance ng inyong center of buoyancy at ng inyong center of gravity, di ba tinatawag natin yung GBO? Okay. So, ang hinahanap natin ngayon would be the distance of your metacenter papunta sa inyong, papunta sa bottom ng inyong ship. Okay. So, paano mangyayari? Yan. No? Igaganito ko na lang yung drawing para mas maintindihan natin. Okay. Ito na yung MBO natin. Ito yung ating 8 meters. Ito yung right angle. This is the 30 degrees and this is your M. Okay. So, hahanapin natin ngayon will be the value of your Y. Ito, incline ko na lang rin para nakita ninyo. Okay. This is your y, and then, dito sa baba, meron ko yung drafts, which is d over 2 and d over 2. Ito yun, o. Oh. In-isolate ko lang para mas makita natin. Okay? So, kukunin natin yung uh, height ng metacentric ninyo from the bottom. Ito man yung bottom. Okay? Parang mali yung drawing natin. Ulitin natin yung drawing natin sa d over 2. Ayusin ko lang ha, para mas ma-imagine natin ang nangyayari. Yan. Okay. So, sabihin natin, nandito yung center of gravity. Nandito yung BO natin. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, the distance here, ito is D over 2. 
at sa baba, that is also d over 2. So, tama bang sabihin, to find the height of your metacenter from the bottom of your shift, that is just, ano ba, mg, kasi mg naman ito, ba? mg is equals to mbo plus d over 2. So, basically, that is equivalent to y. Yan yung y natin. mbo, ito, mbo plus D over 2. Naka-incline din to kasi incline mo yung, makatilt man yung body natin. Okay? Times D over 2. So, alam naman natin yung D over 2. Kasi alam natin yung draft. Sabi dito, nagkaroon tayo ng draft which is 3 meters. So, 3 over 2. This is 1.5. This is also 1.5. Ibig sabihin, ang kailangan na lang natin hanapin ngayon would be the value of your MBO. No, para mas para makuha na natin yung height na metacentric ninyo. And we know that this triangle is just a right triangle. Therefore, magagamit natin yung inyong Pythagorean or yung sa trigon ninyo which is the Sokotoa. And basically, that is just sine, no? Sine of theta or sine 30 is equals to 8 over MBO. So by this, makukuha natin yung value or na ang value na MBO ninyo, or the distance of your metacentric to your center of buoyancy. Ilan to? Sige. Compute muna natin, ha? And that is equivalent to 16. Ibig sabihin, the distance of your MBO is, uh, the distance of your metacenter to your center of buoyancy is 16. Okay. Ma'am, we have question, ma'am. Di ba nag-tilt ng 30 degrees yung ship namin? So, kailan namin na masasabi, ma'am, if the angle na binigay is hindi siya magbibigay ng stable or un ng, hindi siya magbibigay ng unstable equilibrium sa aming body. No? Hindi naman namin pwede i-assume ma'am na nagbigay siya ng 30 degrees, stable yan. Hindi man namin pwede yan siya agad i-assume, di ba ma'am? Well, basically, may point naman yung tanong na yun. So, paano natin malalaman if yung 30 degrees na yan is magbibigay ng writing moment or ng overturning moment? Ganito lang yung pagbabasihan natin. If your MBO is greater than your GBO. When your MBO is greater than your GBO, ibig sabihin, your M is above G. When your M is above G, magbibigay ito ng writing moment. Kapag nagbibigay ito ng writing moment, therefore, that is a stable equilibrium. Okay? Parang dito kasi yung nagiging dito natin dito is the center of buoyancy. No? Yung naging dito ng ating nagbabasihan. Therefore, no, to answer our question, what is the height of your metacenter from the bottom of your shift? So, that is just 16 plus 1.5. And that is equal to 17.5. And that is in meters. Sana naintindihan yun. Okay, erase ko to kasi pwede nyo naman balikan. Letter B, what is the height of your metacentric height? So, formula for your metacentric height, that is just MBO plus minus GBO natin. So, we know na, no? Alam natin that your GBO is equals to 10. Na solve natin a while ago that your MBO is equals to 16. So, the height of your metacenter no, is equivalent to 16 minus 10, and that is equals to 6 meters. Ma'am, ano pala yung height na meta center yung nakuha natin kanina? Take note, no, naging strict si problem kasi kinuha niya yung height ng meta center from the bottom of the shift. So, parang ganito na yung total height nito. Okay, nandito yung M, nandito yung G, wala, next. Sana yun? And then dito yung nandito yung BO. Ang distance nilang dalawa that is 10, the distance ng BO at ng M 
that is 16. So get the difference. No, get the difference. This distance is equivalent to 6 meters. Yun yun for letter B. Okay, let's try another problem. So the center of gravity of a ship in upright position is 11.5 meters above the center of gravity of the portion below water, the displacement being 16 meganewton. The shift tilts 30 degrees, causing the center of buoyancy shift to sideways. should be sideways. No? 9.2 meters. So, is this a moment writing or overturning? So, what is the magnitude of the moment? So, actually, parang parehas lang naman to ganina. No? So, check lang natin if itong... 30 degrees tilting na to at itong weight na binigay na 16 mega newton will give overturning or writing moment sa ating uh, sheet. Okay? So, try natin i-drawing to. No? So, first daw, you have an upright position. Okay, so this is your uh, ship. Okay, so your ship is uh, upright position. So this is your center of gravity and this is your center of buoyancy and this is your meta center. Okay, so ang hinahanap natin ngayon will be uh, if this is the writing moment or resisting, writing moment or overturning moment. So sabi ko kanina, if RM... Ay, mali, mali. Maliktad pala. If your MBO is greater than your GBO, therefore, this is a writing moment. But if your MBO is lesser than your GBO, therefore, this is an overturning moment. Okay. So, let us try to find also the magnitude of this moment. Okay, so this is the original, uh, I mean, the upright position. And it stated that from the center of the gravity to the center of the gravity below the water, the distance of them is 11.5. So, if ang distance of center of gravity at center of buoyancy niya is 11.5, therefore, that is your GBO. Okay, so it tilted, nagbigay siya ng 30 degrees, nagtilt ba yung ating ship into 30 degrees. Okay, so you have here 30 degrees. So from this is your BO, now that this is your BO prime, and the distance of your BO and BO prime, that is 9.2. So pakidrawin nyo na lang, no? pakiemphasize na ito yung right angle natin. Okay, so this is... This is your center of gravity at, let us try, that your uh, meta center is at this point. So, GBO and BO, this is 11.5. So, the distance between your M, uh, your center of buoyancy to your meta center, that is MBO. So, kailangan natin kunin yung value ng MBO para malaman natin if that is a writing moment or a overturning moment. So, kung i-isolate natin to, no, alisin ko siya dito na graph kasi medyo nakakalito nga naman talaga. Ito yung kanyang itsura. Okay? This is 9.2. This is your BO prime. This is your BO. This is your G. And this is your M. And this is 30 degrees. So, this total hypotenuse, okay, tatawagin natin yung MBO. At yung MBO na yan, yung hinahanap natin. Okay? So, that is just sine, no? Opposite over hypotenuse. So, let us try. Sine of 30 is equal to 9.2 divided by your MBO. No? So, try to calculate that one. So, the value na makukuha natin dito, MBO, will be equal to 18.4. So, kanina, no, the given states that your GBO is 11.5. Therefore, MBO is greater than 
your GBO. Therefore, the type of moment na nag-aak dito sa ship natin in this specific problem is a writing moment. Okay, sana nagets yan. Okay, next problem is to get the magnitude of the moment. Okay, so based on the principle kanina, that is just RM. Okay, RM is equals to weight times the X. And your X natin, that is the moment arm of your MG. No, it states kanina that W times your MG sine of theta. Ito na yung sinabi ko na gamitin na ninyo na formula. Okay? At ano ba yung MG natin? Okay? We know that your GBO is 11.5. Your MBO is 18.4. Di ba makukuha natin yung MG or your metacenter by MBO minus GBO? And basically, that is just 18.4 minus 11.5. And that is equals to 6.9. Therefore, what will be your writing moment? Okay, so you have 6,000 mega newton sa so times 1,000 natin para maging newton tayo. So, 16,000 multiplied by your mg, which is 6.9. Okay, na yung, na yung internet. <laughs> Sorry for this. Sign of 30. So, can you use your calculator and get the value of your writing moment? So, can you check if that is equals to 52,000? I mean, 55,200. And that is in kilonewton meters. Again, no, from mega newton times natin ng 1,000 para maging, correction for that, para maging kilonewton. Okay? Okay, check if the answer is 55,200. No, medyo na, na pangit na yung daan ng ating pen tablet. No, and that's how you know what type of moment yung mag apply sa ship ninyo. Next is this one. Okay, so you have a rectangular uh, board that has a dimension of 30 meters long and 10 meters wide and 3 meters depth. So it weighs 5,000 kilonewton when loaded when it's subjected to gravity along the vertical axis of 4 meters from the bottom of the barge. The barge is floating by the seawater of specific gravity of 1.01. So ibig sabihin, okay, Meron daw tayong barge dito, rectangular barge, okay, that is 30 meters long. Sabi na lang natin ganyan para mas ma-visualize natin. Okay, 30 meters long, 10 meters wide, and 3 meters as the depth, okay? So, it weighs a 5,000 kilonewton. When it's specific gravity, I mean, the center of gravity is a at a vertical axis, 4 meters from the bottom of the barge. So, ibig sabihin, galing sa ilalim, pataas, no, which is 4 meters, dito daw natin mismo nakikita yung center of gravity. Okay? Yan yung binigay ng problem. And then, when it's being submerged, no, sa seawater, the specific gravity is 1.01. Now, the question is, determine the draft of the barge in sea water. Hahanapin daw natin yung height ito, yung draft, yung letter D. Hahanapin natin yung height ng draft ng ating barge. Okay? So, it's something with the buoyancy. Again, no? Buoyant force ninyo. Yan? So, we all know that your buoyant force is equals to your weight. Okay? Or weight is equals to the buoyant force where your buoyant force is equal to the unit weight density times the volume of the draft. Okay? So, weight dito, binigyan tayo ng weight that is 5,000 kilonewton. 5,000 kilonewton is equal to the unit weight of the fluid. No? That is 9.81. But take note, hindi man to too big. That is seawater. Therefore, mumultiplyan natin siya ng specific gravity na 1.81. 0, 1. Multiplied by the volume displaced. Ibig sabihin yung volume or yung part ng ating barge that is being displaced or nakalubog. 
And that is 30 times 10 times the draft, yung height na nilubog ng ating fluid. And basically, that is equal to 1.68 meters. Can they check the value na lang ha? Okay, letter B. Determine the metacentric height of the barge due to rolling. O, oh, hahanapin doon natin yung height ng meter center natin due to rolling. Okay, so kung naalala nyo kanina during the introduction, no, this is the length and that is the base. No, this is the axis ng ating barge. Pag sinabi natin rolling, ganito yun, yung ikot natin. Okay? And when we say pitching, ito naman yun. Yan. So, first question is find the height of your metacentric no, due to the rolling. Okay? Ano ba yung formula ng metacentric natin? That is just MBO minus GBO. Okay, so first let us try to get the value of your MBO. No, yung formula natin, meron tayong formula na I over V. Where your I is the inertia and your V is the volume of, I mean, that is the volume of the draft. Okay, so since rectangle man to, no, that is a rectangle moment of inertia, that, that, that is just BH cube over 12. So you have 30 divided by 10 cube bakit yung 10 yung kinubukyo no because no ang ating tilting or ang rolling ng inyong uh, problem is with respect to rolling ibig sabihin this is the 10 no kapag nagtilt to kapag nagroll to di ba yung 10 is magiging height natin siya no i'm try to imagine that one na kapag nagtilt na siya kapag nagroll na siya yung wide natin magiging height na siya kasi naging tilted na nga Okay, divided by 12, divided by the volume of the draft, that is just 30 times 10, times yung bagay natin na solve lang, which is 1.68. Therefore, how much is your MBO? And I think that is just equivalent to 5.04 meters. And let us try to solve for your GBO. Okay, your GBO is the distance of your center of center of gravity to your center of buoyancy. So your center of gravity, di ba 4 yan? No, center of gravity is 4. And the placement of your center of buoyancy is half of the height of the draft ninyo, which is D over 2. It's just minus D over 2, which is your D is 1.68. And how much will be your GBO? That is just 3.16. No? I hope nagigets yan. So, therefore, ilan yung magiging metacentric height natin ngayon? That is just 5.04 minus 3.16. And that is equivalent to 1.88 meters. Again, ito yung magiging metacentric height natin if no, if your barge is tilting into a rolling uh, assumption. Sige, in-exit ko kasi medyo lag na. No, kaya nahihirapan akong magsalat. Sige. I-try naman natin when it is pitching. Okay? Kapag pitching naman, yung GBO doesn't change. Ganun naman pa rin yung GBO. Okay? Yung pitching lang. Kasi yung pitching, ito naman yung side ng ating uh, i-co-consider. Kung nakikita nyo, parang nagsisink na siya pataas, no? magsisink siya pataas or pababa. No? Ito naman, kung rolling kasi, side by side, okay? side by side yung pagiging tilt ng ating barge. Kapag pitching naman, up and down to, kung nakikita nyo, kung maiimagine ninyo yung barge ninyo. Okay? And we have a derived formula for that. No? You have MBO is equals to XL squared over Okay, that is L squared over 12D. Where your D there, that is the height of your draft. Yung L natin is the length of your barge. So basically, that is just 30 squared over 12 times the draft, which is 
68. So, ilan yung MBO natin ngayon dito? So, that is 30 squared divided by 12 times 1.68. Okay, so that is 44.64. 44.64. So, to get your metacentric height, so that is just MBO minus GBO. Therefore, that is 44.64 minus 3.16. And that would be equal to 41.48. 41.48 meters. Okay? Hindi ko kasi, hindi ko alam bakit hindi nakaka-on yung aking camera. No? Imagine nyo na lang, no? Again, this is the longer side and this is the shorter side of your barge. Okay? Sa axis natin. Sa shorter side natin, yung nangyayari dito is pwede maging rolling, magtitilt no magtitilt side by side side by side yung inyo barge kapag pitching naman nangyayari yung pitching ninyo sa longer side no ito dito sa longer side so parang up and down parang forward backward forward backward yun nangyayari sa barge ninyo okay so for the next problem this will be your assignment nagdag ninyo doon sa first assignment na binigay ko and this will be another problem and that would be all Thank you everyone and God bless.